What's up guys, Nate with Dirt Lifestyle here and today I'm gonna teach you how to teach yourself how to weld. I am constantly getting emails, direct messages, uh, people contacting me that they ask for me to do a basics to welding video and that is what this is gonna be. I'm here to give you the basics that you need to know to start welding as soon as you're done with this video. Before you get started welding, you need to get some good PPE. So I'd recommend a decent set of welding gloves. I would recommend one of these. A lot of people don't buy these, but I really like them. It's just like a welding hat. If you have spatter or anything, you're a bald guy like me, it's nice to not have your welding spatter hit directly on your skin. And then you need a good auto darkening helmet. What's nice about an auto darkening helmet is you can see through it whenever you're not welding. And then whenever you are welding, it automatically dims to shield your eyes from the bright light. Then I would also recommend a thin set of gloves for tacking and whatnot, because whenever you're handling something kind of complicated with multiple pieces you gotta hold together to tack, it's kind of hard and cumbersome with a thick set of gloves. So I will tack things together with a thin set of gloves. And then whenever I go back to finish weld, I put my thick set of gloves back on. If you haven't bought a machine yet, there is a lot to consider. So let's take a minute or so and just go over the basics of what you're looking for. First two things I would recommend you need to look for when you're buying a machine is that it's 220 and that it is shielded, meaning that it's gonna use a gas. The gas that you're gonna be using is a 75-25 mix of argon and CO2. And the reason that I always stick with a 220 is that I had a 110 first. It's good for sheet metal work, like really thin, you know, like a fender or something on a truck, but it is not good for fabric bumpers, skid plates, anything like that. So I would definitely recommend just getting something that's 220. You can find 220 welders in the same price range as a 110 welder, um, and you will have so much less headaches in the future. You can always take a 220 welder and step down the wire and turn it way down and weld sheet metal, but you can't take a sheet metal welder and turn it up high enough to weld quarter inch plate. This machine is the Miller Multimatic 20 AC DC. This is what's called a multi-process machine. So this machine has the ability to weld multiple welding types. So it comes with a TIG torch, it comes with a MIG gun, and it even comes with uh, the leads in order to make it a stick welder as well. Pretty much any MIG machine you buy will have this door right here, and this is where you're gonna load your wire and everything. Um, I use .035, there's .030 and .023 are also very popular. Um, 035 is pretty good for just about anything but really thin sheet metal. If you're gonna do really thin sheet metal, I would recommend either using .023 in a spool gun or you can put .023 in this machine. It's just you're a lot more likely to kink the thin wire whenever you're going through a really long lead like this. We have this selected on MIG Steel C25. That's exactly what we're gonna be welding today. And then we can select the wire size. So there's 030, there's 024. We're gonna go to 035 because that's the wire we're using. I think we're gonna start with quarter inch. So we're gonna go to quarter. One thing I did forget to mention is a good welding jacket. So the traditional welding jacket is leather. It's heavy duty. It's kind of cumbersome. Doesn't breathe very well. Um, I have been using these thinner welding jackets for years. I've never had a burn go through the jacket at all. So this is what I would recommend, but it's your body. Make sure you do your research. Don't just listen to some random guy on YouTube. You need a couple basic tools. This is a angle grinder with a flap wheel. The flap wheel is nice because it doesn't dig down too deep and uh, you can just kind of put a polish on all your edges and everything that you're gonna weld. The cleaner your weld, the better quality the weld is gonna be. Now you can stick plenty of dirty stuff together. People weld on dirty stuff all the time, but since you're gonna be practicing, I would recommend cleaning the surfaces of everything you're gonna be welding first. The other tools that I would recommend are some of these little, little 90 degree magnets. These are really handy for a number of different instances and you can, you can get these on Amazon. I will put a link to some different magnets and stuff on Amazon that I think are pretty good. Also, get yourself a set of welding pliers. These are pretty slick. So you can snip the wire with that. This is uh, the right size for the tip so you can undo the tip if it's kind of bound on there. This is the right size for the nozzle. This is a slag hammer. Um, I don't use it very often, but sometimes you're using a plasma cutter or something, you end up getting a little slag on the end that you can knock off with the slag hammer and get yourself a decent stainless steel brush, but any kind of wire brush so you can clean your material as you're going. 
This is kind of a bonus. This is called nozzle gel. And once you get your nozzle warmed up, you can dip it in there and it'll help keep all the different stuff from building up inside your nozzle, keeping the nozzle clean. Everything you weld, you need to ground in order for the machine to complete an arc. That arc is what's gonna actually cause the steel or aluminum or whatever you're welding to heat up and then melt into a pool. And whenever that pool cools down, that creates your weld. Whenever I'm welding small stuff like this, I like to weld on a vise. It's nice to be able to anchor something down as you're welding. Get some scrap steel. Since you haven't welded a lot yet, I assume you don't have a lot of scrap steel. Most steel yards will have a remnants area and they'll sell it to you by the pound. It's a lot cheaper to buy that way. Just go get a bunch of quarter inch, a bunch of 3 16 maybe some eight, but mostly stuff that's thicker while you're learning how to do all this. Um, quarter inch and 3 eighths I think are both great to start with because they're really forgiving. It's a lot harder to warp them as you're welding. Once you get eighth inch or smaller, it's way easier to warp the material and it can get kind of frustrating. The first thing we're gonna do to get a feel for our welder is we are just gonna weld straight lines all the way down a flat piece of steel. This is the easiest way to learn how the welder feels and works and whatnot. If you've never touched a welder, if you've never been around a welder, um, there's a chart that's on the inside of your door if you don't have a nice welder like this where you can just set your material thickness. And on that chart, it will have your material thickness. It'll kind of give you a basic starting point. So right now, set it up to that starting point. And if you have quarter inch material, set it to quarter, set it to your wire size, and then you kind of have a spot to start from. So we're gonna start, we're not gonna do any circles, we're not gonna do any weave patterns, we're not gonna do anything fancy. We're literally just going to start at one point and we're gonna do a really hot weld all the way across. Every time before I start welding, I trim the last little bit off because it's contaminated. And sometimes it's hard to start a new weld because there's like dirt and stuff that'll be stuck in there. So we just trim that off and now we got a fresh piece of wire to start with. This is what it's gonna look like. Basically just a couple of fat slugs. They're not pretty, but this is what you're looking for. You know, right now we're just basically stacking material on material. Now, if you take and you cut and you grind a nice big notch in here, whenever you weld, it's gonna be able to set a lot flatter um, and it's, it's gonna be a lot better looking. But to start, I just want you to weld a bunch of lines. I did a DL for Dirt Lifestyle because I'm a dork, but you don't have to do that. Or you can put your wife's initials in there so you can see what uh, you know how much you like her. Once you've done a whole bunch of passes and you've adjusted your machine to where you feel pretty comfortable and your welds are consistent all the way throughout, you know you don't have any big bulges or pops or anything like that. Then it's time to weld two pieces of steel together, and we're basically just going to weld two flat plates together. This is the easiest way I think to kind of go to the next step. So I'm just going to lay this right here. We're going to do what's called a tack. And that's where you're gonna just put a little fast weld right here. I'm gonna put one on the back side because as we're welding, if we just start welding this, it's actually gonna pull the plate up and it's gonna, you know, that's what happens. This one steel gets really hot. It starts to pull in weird places um, as it cools down and shrinks. And so this plate could look like that if we don't tack it down first. So once I put a couple of meaty tacks on here, it's gonna make it to where as I go through and I put a really hot pass on one side, um, the tax should keep it from bowing up on us. This is about what you're gonna end up with. Now we're still just holding the nozzle steady and we're just slowly moving it throughout the weld. We, these welds will start to look better as I show you some different techniques here in a few minutes. But first, I just want you to hold it and just keep it as consistent as you can throughout the weld. You're trying to teach yourself the hand position. You're trying to teach yourself how to be comfortable while you're welding. You're trying to teach yourself what the machine should sound like. That's the goal of doing these plates on plates type of thing. So. You can just keep stacking plates until you feel comfortable with it. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weld like a 90 degree. So we're gonna stick a piece like this to another piece of material. This is where your magnets are gonna come in handy. I have basically a gusset holding that up and then we have a magnet here and a magnet on the back side. This is gonna give us a bunch of different angles and challenges to weld. And this setup is what I actually recommend you practice on the most. So once you've kind of got a good feel for your welder and you've stacked a bunch of plates together, 
Now you need to weld from different positions. And this is where you're gonna actually increase your welding skills the most is by trying to weld this in different positions. You know, this one isn't too bad because gravity is just kind of holding it down. This one, you know, the weld can get away from you as you're welding down. I would try welding it down. That's usually what I like to do, but also try welding it up. Sometimes you're gonna be welding on a vehicle or welding on some sort of structure where you're not gonna have the easiest reach. And so welding in different positions like these on a really small controlled scale is gonna help you build up those different skills and stuff in order to make it to where when you're in the field and you're doing something, you're gonna kind of be familiar with welding from different positions and be comfortable with being uncomfortable. The magnets will not resist this thing trying to bend. So the magnets are just there so we can basically put some tacks on here. I like to put a tack on a spot like right here because whenever it shrinks, it should have kind of a hard time pulling this up. You know, if you put a tack right here, it could pull it away from the magnet. So I start by, I'll put a tack right there. I'll put a tack right here. And then I'll maybe put one here and there. Just a couple light ones at first and then put two or three really fat tacks on there. And then it should hold in place. We can pull the magnets and we can do our welds. You're gonna notice that these welds look a little bit neater and that's because there's a technique that we're about to go over that's gonna show you how to make them look a little bit more consistent and just a little bit better overall. If you wanna change the look of your weld, there's three techniques that I know of that can slightly change the way it looks whenever you're all done welding. And the first one is just gonna be concentric circles. So you're just gonna take and you're just gonna do this over and over and over and over. And what's interesting is it doesn't look like circles when you're done. It kind of looks more like a V or something like that. The other technique is to do C's. So you're just gonna move C, 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 all the way down. And this does make your weld look slightly different. I will use either one of these techniques just depending on what I'm doing. Whenever I'm filling, I for some reason prefer to use the C method. So um, if there's like a really fat gap, I'll put some really big tacks on it to just kind of try to build things up so it doesn't fall through. And then I'll just do C's over and over and over. And you're just trying to drag that puddle and move it around. Um, one thing that's nice about this method is, you know, if you get things too hot, they'll fall through. But if you keep moving the whole time, it's a lot easier to pull a really hot pool over a hole without falling through. The other technique, and I don't use this one very much, but I have seen a lot of people do it. You go forward, come back, go forward, come back, go forward, come back, go forward, come back. And the reason that these methods make it look better than if you're just trying to go steady is actually going steady and keeping your weld consistent is extremely, extremely difficult. And you can very clearly see anywhere that you went a little too slow or a little too fast or you wiggled a little bit. But if you move that pool and you make it to where you have a nice fat puddle that you're dragging along, it kind of covers up those little imperfections in your weld and gives it a better look overall. Now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I have a odd chunk of scrap that I pulled out of my scrap pile. I decided to put a couple creases in it, put a couple dimples in it with some dimple dies. And so I'm gonna use the three techniques that we had up on that whiteboard. And we're just gonna see how they look at the end of this thing. I'm gonna make a little dirt lifestyle trophy. hand side we did the start stop method so we just kind of went forward back forward back forward back it turns out how I usually notice they turn out there's a lot of little bit of extra spatter and whatnot around the weld you know that's okay it's not that big of a deal but I prefer it to be as clean as possible the center weld is basically just circles over and over and over and over for me that creates the most uniform looking weld but I'm also pretty partial to the left weld here and this is just C's over and over and over making little C's. So those are the two methods that are my favorite, but I do think that depending on what look you're going for and what project you're working on, all three of these could be used and be very satisfactory. I know I'm gonna get some questions about these little skulls. These are from a company called Ballistic Fabrication. These guys work with us quite a bit. They sent me some of these a while back and I decided to use them on this project. 
When I give an apprentice a task, I give them enough information so they can complete the task. I don't just give them all the knowledge for the entire trade and now say, all right, now you can go do it. Um, this video is basically the exact same principle. I wanted to give you guys enough stuff to practice and enough information to fire up your machine that you can get started welding. But clearly, there is so much more to welding than what we have seen here. But it's all about that experience. It's all about those hours. You've got to get out into the shop. You've got to put your hours in and you have to just get some time on your machine so you can become comfortable with it and you can start doing some fun projects with it. If you're new to the channel, I have a whole bunch of different off-road builds that I work on here in the shop, and then I bring a bunch of stuff in from outside the shop too. So if you like those kinds of things, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of content on here that's kind of along these fabrication lines. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. If you can support us on Patreon, we really appreciate it. And if you want to get shirts, hats, t-shirts, anything like that, make sure you go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We'll see you next Friday.